is shining, the birds are chirping, and we are here to, well, party with you this morning and maybe bring you a little news and fun along the way as well. So welcome to the morning show. Of course, on the brand new Main Street TV, we appreciate you tuning in, however you are doing so this morning. We need to get that poor guy a new video. The fact that he has to walk through the snow every day when the sun's shining is just not right. <laughs> he doesn't seem to mind. He doesn't seem to care. He's still smiling. He, while you know, he always it. does it the same way every day. That's that's the thing that gets me. <laughs> he does. You're right. All right. Well, of course, it is Monday, and we are here to start off the morning show with a morning news update. Of course, brought to you by Nia Henry, agent for Appalachia Realty. If you're looking to buy or sell, give Nia a call seven four zero four one eight four one three five, and uh, she will help you out. All right, our good friend Pete Wilson is here, and it's Monday, so that means there's lots of news to report and uh, some crazy basketball games over the weekend as well. Right. Well, I tell you what, the NCAA basketball Ooh. tournament, you can always count on uh, some excitement, uh, fantastic one, finishes, upsets. This uh, one's been you know, wild. It's, it's a continuing drama. You know, yes. the brackets, everybody's brackets got bust a long time ago. <laughs> but you know what? I'm in a pool where, you know, you pick teams. And I just discovered uh, when I was reviewing where I stood that I picked Oral Roberts. So now that got me some extra points because I it's so. all the teams. And you know who else I have? The Oregon State Beavers. <laughs> you know, I wasn't ex expecting to get a, a, a whole lot of help there, but. You know, the beavers have been busy. The beavers are doing it, man. And and I'll tell you, Oral Roberts about about nailed it this weekend too. And they were they were ahead in the second half. They were ahead in the second half. I figured, well, there goes the fifteen seed winning the third game they're not supposed to. Right. Uh very it exciting. makes you feel a little bit just a little bit better if you're a Buckeye fan. I, I know. Honestly, we were watching that game Saturday night and I was just really rooting for them. So I'm like, anything that they continue to win is uh <laughs> makes us look not quite so bad, but uh, yeah, it's uh, been an exciting time and uh, lots of fun to watch these games. Absolutely. I don't care whether you're a basketball fan or not. When it gets to tournament time, you have some really good teams playing. Right, exactly. And then yeah. the, the thing that makes it obviously more exciting is a lot of people, uh, you know, are in, the, are in the different pools, you know, including yeah. <laughs> our basketball mania, which is continuing. So yes. 370 some people, I think. So that's you know, crazy. a lot. Okay, well, anyway, uh, back to now. <laughs> Unfortunately, we had some chaos to report here oh, in the no. last three or four days. Uh, last night, uh, I regret to report that a Jackson family uh, lost their home and most of their belongings in a fire. Uh, that's the house at 9 Lady Avenue in Jackson. That's on the corner of Lady Avenue and Morton Street. You know, if you're heading out of town that way towards Colton on State Route 93, you see that house sitting up on the left, right across Lady Avenue from the American Legion Post. Uh, but that fire uh, occurred uh, about 7.16 p.m. The Jackson Fire Department and Liberty F Township Fire Department uh, responded. However, the fire had a big head start. There were five people who lived in the house, and some of them were in there when the fire started. Uh, they were able to get out safely, so thankfully no injuries there. The house is still standing, but fire pretty much gutted it. It is considered uh, a total loss, cause of the fire. Undetermined, but not considered to be suspicious. Uh, but one of the only good things is uh, apparently the losses covered by insurance. Uh, the owner occupant of the house was Rhonda Browning. Uh, she lived there uh, with her daughter and her daughter's three young children. So they're looking for a home, but once again, covered by insurance and the American Red Cross uh, was uh, called to provide some immediate assistance. Okay, another thing happened uh, where there were no injuries, but it was a little bit of an attention getter in Jackson on Saturday morning. There was an incident that happened in front of Jackson Ag Service down at 61 Dickinson Street. A big uh, semi hauling a grain trailer tipped over while it was unloading. Oh, and no. And unfortunately, the, uh, when the trailer uh, fell over, it did two things. It, uh, the load, there is, uh, want to guess what that is? It's soybean meal. I had to ask, but that was what oh. I was told, soybean meal. Uh, everybody grows soybeans. You wonder why. Well, there's, there's some of it right there. Uh, anyway, that load tipped over partially into the road. The trailer extended just a little bit into the Dickinson Street. As you can see, it took them most of the day to clean that up. No injuries or anything, but like I say, it was uh, definitely caused some attention there. Uh, Brian Allen, 44, of Winchester, that's in Adams County, was driving that vehicle. And when he was, uh, it was one of those lift 
trailers and when he was lifting the trailer to unload that big load it for some reason it just tipped over unfortunately another inconvenience uh, that was caused was that it hit some utility guy wires and that caused uh, utility lines to come down uh, and uh, it did not disrupt any electric service although a city electric pole or maybe two was uh, compromised by all this you can see the lines down in the road there so they had to reset a, a pole or two, the city electric department did. Don't think anybody was out of service. Frontier Communications was there, so there may have been uh, some telephone slash internet services that were affected, but I know they had them repaired that day. We've got some pictures of this uh, you know, online uh, on our Telegram uh, website and on Facebook as well, and we'll have a, a full report uh, in our Wednesday print edition. Uh, a report out of Wellston, no photos to show you here, but uh, kind of a scary incident that we learned about on Friday uh, after we were on the show, so I couldn't tell you about it then. But this happened Thursday evening in Wellston. Uh, chief John Robinson, uh, the police chief there, told us that police were told on Thursday evening about the presence of a man with a gun in the street in the 400 block of South Wisconsin Avenue. That is in a residential section of Wellston. Officers quickly learned that the incident started inside of a home on Wisconsin Avenue where the male suspect allegedly fired the weapon more than once inside a residence where there were people inside. They also learned that the suspect had fled the scene and fired the weapon again while outside the residence and then allegedly pointed the gun at a person in an alley near South Minnesota Avenue. Officers were able to obtain information and locate this suspect at a residence on South Ella. South Illinois Avenue, that's uh, nearby. The suspect was taken into custody uh, within an hour after the incident occurred. He also had drugs and paraphernalia in his uh, possession. They were also taken into custody. The suspect, whose name has not been released at this point, was incarcerated in the Jackson County Correctional Facility. Uh, the prosecutor will determine some of the charges that might happen. Once again, Chief Robinson says that thankfully, Considering there was gunfire involved and perhaps threats, I presume, no physical injuries were reported to anybody involved, including the suspect. All right, we'll come around to COVID-19. You know when it's the third or fourth thing on my list, it can't be too bad. We did receive no uh, new reports from either the Jackson County Health Department or the Vinton County Health Department. Uh, but remember, we gave you news towards the end of the week that the number of local cases had gone up a little bit both places. And uh, Jennifer, I've been monitoring a little bit of the news uh, beyond Jackson County, and cases are actually going up again a little bit nationally and in the state. And of course, in the world, there's some variants that are raging. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, you know, this thing is not completely over now. You keep hearing different things about whether the current vaccine will take care uh, or protect us against a variant. Once again, it's unsettling when you hear experts say different things, but uh, it is believed by the last thing that I read, that it probably would, probably uh, in italics, probably would protect you uh, to a degree at least against that variant of COVID-19 in South America that uh, you know you we're starting to hear so much about. Now, the Jackson County Health Department did give us some important updated news about vaccination clinics over the weekend. Here is the updated situation on clinics. Listen carefully, especially if you haven't had both doses of the vaccine and you want to get uh, want to get vaccinated or if you had none. This Wednesday, that's March the 31st, at the First Church of the Nazarene from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. and then again, same day, 1 p.m. to 7 p.m., Moderna and Pfizer first and second doses will be available for anyone ages 16 and older. The 16 and older part is important. Remember, they had to delay 16 and 17 because they didn't have the Pfizer vaccine available. Well, now they have it, so if you're 16 or 17 and you couldn't go last week when everybody 18 and older can go, you have the green light. People do for the second doses this week should come on this day, that's the 31st, and not on April 2nd. Any clinic that was initially set for the 2nd now has been moved to March the 31st because the 2nd is Good Friday. That's a holiday. Mm. On Monday, April the 5th, from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m., there will be another clinic, and this one will feature the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. You hear so much about this. That's the third main vaccine. We've already heard a lot about Pfizer and Moderna. Johnson & Johnson seems to appeal to lots of people. One-shot mm -hmm. deal, not a two-shot deal. 
Uh, you, you hear some things that it may not have quite the effective uh, rate as the others, but it's still high, and obviously they wouldn't approve it if it didn't work. But uh, if you want the Johnson & Johnson uh, because, uh, you know, you like the name or you like the one-shot uh, feature, uh, that is Monday, April 5, from 2 to 7 p.m., and it will be available on a first-come, first-served basis. I'm sure they're saying that because they don't know, uh, you know, if that's going to draw a lot of people. Then on Thursday, April— Is that at the church as well? Everything is at the First okay. Church of the Nazarene, uh, Jen. And then on Thursday, April 8, also at the First Church of the Nazarene, from 2 to 7 p.m., a week from this Thursday, first and second doses of the Moderna and Pfizer vaccine will be available for anyone ages 16 and older. People due through their second dose this week should plan to come to this clinic. All right, so, you know, I shot through that pretty quickly, but once again, uh, you can get this information on the Telegram website. It's already uh, there, and of course, we'll be repeating it in our print edition. We also have it on the Telegram Facebook page. Uh, remember, this is the week also that the mass vaccination clinics will open. Uh, the nearest one to us is in Chillicothe. It will be at the um, it will be at the Adena Regional Medical Center, and uh, that we have not got specific times or anything, but it is supposed to be available this week, and this week has arrived. So uh, you want to give Adena a call over there. You can find out whether that is available, but I imagine that it is. Uh, the governor and the Ohio Department of Health came up with these mass vaccination clinics to once again make it as, as, uh, as easy as possible to get a COVID-19 vaccine if somehow, you know, you can't get to the ones done locally in each county. Uh, the, the Vinton County Health Department will uh, also be doing vaccines, of course. We don't have a schedule for them, but we know that if you go to their website or Facebook, they have ways to uh, make an appointment or to get information about clinics there. Also, uh, the, the mobile vac vaccination clinic being done by the Ohio University of Osteopathic Medicine Group, they will be doing mobile vaccine clinics in four or five area counties, including Vinton. I believe the dates for Vinton County when that mobile clinic comes to Vinton County is uh, April 14th and April 28th. Those are two Wednesdays. We'll give you the times when we get it, but it will be at the Forget Me Not Event Center in Zaleski. All right, moving on. We know that there is less testing going on through COVID-19. Sense of security deal where people think, oh, shoot, I'm getting the vaccination or vaccinations are coming up. More people are getting vaccination, herd immunity. People are not getting tested. get COVID different places center in the Jackson clinic of Jackson pharmacy we understand that nationally fewer people are getting tested and those who are getting tested have a higher positivity rate that's another kind of like signal that maybe we just need to be careful a little bit. Yep. All right, moving on. Uh, later today, the Vinton County Elections Board will have a very important meeting. It's a reorganizational meeting. Remember, they now have four board members again. Uh, it will be 4 p.m. today at the Elections Board office there at the community building. Uh, the new members are Carolyn Brown and Kim Wortman. They will join uh Continuing members, Benita Peters and Nikki Harvey, of course, their important business is to uh, search and then choose a new director and deputy director so they can have a full-time staff. We want to uh, give a big salute to an Oak Hill Elementary fifth grader, Adrian Goodman. Adrian Goodman is the uh, son of Shane Goodman and Wendy Vermillion Goodman and the stepson of Deanna Goodman. And Deanna Goodman uh, does uh, the Fab D the Fab D family um, business out there on, uh, on Main Street. And she does a video that has got, I guess, some national attention, I understand. Uh, she does different things on video to promote her business. And Adrian Gidman, who is her stepson, fifth grader at uh, Oak Hill Elementary, he was able to uh, go on one of the videos that his stepmother does and sell his artwork. There is Adrian Goodman right there. And that faith-based artwork that he did uh, raised $500 in a very short time. And you know what he did with that $500? He wanted to help 
other kids. And so he donated it to uh, Oaks United, which is the group that does the food program out of the Oak Hill schools. And the person he's giving that to, that's Adrian on the right, he is giving a $500 check to Alicia Lloyd Kamer, who is one of the leaders of, the, uh, of that food program in Oak Hill, uh, run by Oaks United. Alicia is also a school nurse at Oak Hill Elementary School. So $500 this young man raised uh, just through his own generosity and sense of wanting to help others. So congratulations to him. That story, by the way, is featured in our Saturday edition of the Telegram. We also want to tell you, remember, the Trout Festival is coming up on Saturday, April 17th. I think Phil mentioned that when he was up here one time. Well, they also released trout in Lake Alma State Park. Oh, and they cool. did that, I think, last week on March the 26th. So those trout right now are swimming around Lake Alma, and they're a little stunned right now. This might be the time to get them. So even though they have no trout festival at Lake Alma, they do have new trout. They're just swimming into each other. And so are I didn't know, are you allowed to fish at Lake Alma? Absolutely. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Absolutely. Cool. Now, uh, I would have a fishing license if you did that. That would probably Because, you know, be, there, yes. there's guys in Smokey the Bear outfits over there, and, you know, they'll, they'll check That's you out. Right. But uh, I've always been, I've never caught a single trout in my life, even though I used to fish a lot. I never did very well at the trout festival. Did all right on the sun fishing like that. Those were easier to catch. But on the, on the trout, I'm told that if you can get to the right place when they're just put in, they don't quite know what to do. So <laughs> they may be very catchable. Gotcha. All right. Now, that's what somebody else said. I never, it never worked for me. <laughs> okay. Well, we want to tell you that the Oak Hill schools are doing their Hall of Honor uh, program this year. They do it every other year, and this is the year that they're doing it. Uh, the last uh, inductee was the late Tim McCoy in 2019. But the, uh, how they do the Hall of Honor nominations, you can find information on the school website, but they invite the public to make nominations, and then whoever they pick is going to be uh, recognized, or their family is going to be recognized if, uh, if, uh, if you know, the inductee happens to be deceased. The family will be recognized at this year's graduation ceremony. Now, the deadline to submit applications or suggestions is this Thursday, April the 1st. So... If you uh, want to uh, see the nomination criteria and you have a suggestion for someone who has had, uh, you know, a profound positive effect on the Oak Hill schools or as an employee of the Oak Hill schools uh, in the community or some graduate of Oak Hill High School who's done things in the world else of Oak Hill, all those uh, things apply. You can see the criteria and make nominations through the website. You can also call the superintendent secretary, Nancy Charrington, at 740-682-7595. She will take your nomination or give you guidance. The Jackson Area YMCA, Jennifer, is doing a, a youth soccer program, very important in Jackson. Signups are now underway. Go to their Facebook or their website to see how that works. But there's three leagues, uh, U6, U9, and U12, based on age. These are co-ed programs. Uh, very, uh, it's very uh, economical. Uh, to participate, only $20 if you're a Y member, $25 if you're not a Y member. And uh, Tim Harvey is very inclusive. He will make sure that any kid who wants to participate will, that money will not be a problem. All right, on sports, a number of things we want to tell you. Of course, uh, the uh, spring sports started last weekend, Jennifer, and it was a, Saturday was a nice day and there was lots of action. And this is a shot that uh, I believe that Red Thompson took, Red Thompson Jr., and that's Jeremiah Frisbee rounding uh, the base uh, after, uh, after getting a hit uh, in their game against Chesapeake, which Wellston won, by the way, so we're glad to show you that picture. But Wellston defeated Chesapeake. The Wellston Lady uh, Rockets won their softball game as well. And so we're kind of telling you this, that spring sports is underway. We're going to be covering it in the Telegram. We're also going to be covering Jackson High School baseball on the radio. And uh, we've got quite a tandem for that. We've got the old right-hander, Pete Wilson, and the old left-hander, Dan Morrow, <laughs> set up to do these games. Our first game will be Tuesday awesome. uh, down at, uh, at Howler Field. We'll be doing all the home games, and the first one is this Tuesday. Broadcast time will be shortly before 5 o'clock. The first pitch is scheduled for 5 the Jackson Ironmen, by the way, opened their season on the road at Veterans at the VA Stadium over in Chillicothe. They beat Galley Academy 16-6. to And let me tell you, something happened remarkable in that game. Okay, Jennifer, single, double, triple home run. What's the one that you see the least in a baseball game? 
of those four. Those, those are the four hits you can get. Single, double, triple, homer. I would say a triple. Absolutely. Usually pros get are, are no more than 10 or, or fewer triples per year. Sure. Holden Blankenship, the shortstop for the Jackson Ironman, he is a junior, had four, four triples in what? one game. And we're showing you a basketball shot of Holden because we haven't been able to take his picture yet on the baseball field. <laughs> he runs too fast. He's, it, he's yeah, well, he's moving. a pretty good basketball player too. Uh, but Holden, four triples in one game and... I've not looked at the record book, but I have been told by reliable sources that that ties a state record that goes back a long way. So four triples in one game plus the Ironmen are victorious. Wow. So uh, that was pretty. That was pretty cool. We also uh, want to tell you uh, about the Jackson girls basketball team. We're going to roll the tape back to basketball season. This is pretty special too, and these girls deserve uh, an attention and more than a mention on television. That is them being. That is them posing. All nine members of the Jackson High School girls varsity basketball team with the certificates they got. They're being all academic for the Frontier Athletic Conference. I think you have to have a 3.5 grade point average or more to do that, and that's pretty special. All nine of them got that. But let me tell you something more special. All nine of those girls got four points. What? Four, four points is all A's. Okay, if you didn't know that. And they were one of only six basketball teams in the entire state of Ohio to be able to achieve this. From left to right, they deserve to have their names uh, uh, mentioned here on television. From left to right in the picture, if you're looking you know, on television or on a computer monitor, monitor, there is Olivia Kennedy, Macy Burnside, Maddie Walburn, Lauren Elliott, TJ Carpenter, Sydney Hughes, Kenzie Davis, Taylor Evans, and Caitlin Webb. So congratulations to those girls because, you know, when you do extracurricular activities and basketball, you're talking about practicing every night. You maybe have two or three games a week. That puts extra pressure on you on the academic side. And so congratulations to all of them. Congratulations to their parents. They're obviously supportive. Congratulations also to Coach Matt Walburn. Uh, he has to be very proud of those girls. Uh, and so uh, we did definitely want to mention that. So there we are. We're done playing ball now. I'm going to go down and play editor. That's right. Uh, I don't think you're playing, Pete. No, no, no I'm, not, I'm not playing, but I have. I, I try to have a little fun along the way. You're, he's just straight up nailing some newspaper and putting it out. We're going to do our best. I guarantee, I'll, give, I'll guarantee you that much. All right. Well, thank you, Pete. We appreciate you. Of course, in Pete's morning news update, always brought to you by Nia Henry, agent for Appalachia Realty. If you are looking to buy or sell, give Pete or <laughs> Pete. Well, you can call Pete, too, if you want. Call Nia, 740-418-4135, and she will work for you. All right, let's head on over to your Telegram News Spring Subscription Special Weather Forecast. And you have approximately two more days to sign up for the Telegram Spring Subscription Special. What is that? Well, it's $10 off a year subscription to the telegram and it gets you the month uh, or it gets you the print and digital subscription and it averages out to three dollars and 75 cents per month you can't not beat that so uh, please that is for Jackson and Benton counties only but please subscribe you can do that by calling 740-286-3023 you do have to make that phone call to get that uh, subscription price can't do it online. So again, 740-286-3023 to get a year's worth of the telegram for $3.75 per month here in Jackson or Benton County. All right, your weather forecast looking pretty darn good. Sunshine in the forecast today. A little cooler temperatures with highs around 56 degrees. For tonight, clear lows of 37. But look at that tomorrow, mostly sunny skies. Highs tomorrow of 71 degrees, so that is awesome. Little chance of shower creeping in uh, tomorrow night and then moving on into Wednesday. Do have about an 80% chance of rain um, as well tomorrow night and Wednesday. But that's all right because tomorrow and today will be absolutely sunny and pretty. So there you go. All right, well, our good friend Phil is in the house. What is going on, big guy? Not a whole lot. Oh. Larry Monday. 
Pete's bringing more news. Oh, okay. Is well, this breaking news? Badeep, badeep, badeep? Kind of, okay. yeah. Um, well, the service director in Wellston, uh, Jeff King, had decided to step down yeah. last week. Charlie had said that um, last Friday. And Pete just brought this up. And this is an email from Charlie uh, Hudson, the mayor of Wellston, that says he has chosen Anthony Brenner to fill the role of the service and safety director, effective April 5th, which is Jeff's last day. Um, as you know, Anthony Brenner is a council member currently, and he's been involved with uh, Make Wellston Beautiful. He's a 1995 graduate of Wellston High School. Um, after 21 years of serving in the military, he returned to Wellston and started his own business, restoring homes as a general contractor. So he will be filling that seat, and they'll um, have to find another council member also because he was appointed the fourth ward city councilman seat um, in May of 2019. So there'll be some more changes coming to Wellston. Uh, that's that's a good thing. It didn't take them long to find a replacement, so they won't have to go without that expertise in that role. It's a very important job. So I think he'll be a good fit for that job. There so, you go. And um, yeah, that's not an easy, that's not some easy shoes to fill. Uh, a service director is a tough, tough job and it's, um, probably a thankless job and people have no idea i mean you're basically running a city yeah and and up until charlie hired jeff i mean that that position was only twenty thousand a year before they hired jeff they almost doubled it because Correct. they knew in order to find you know a quality candidate they had to up the pay a little bit that's right because um literally you're running a city and, and having to make decisions for the entire um you know, for all of the residents. And um, yeah, that's a little more than a $20,000 a year job, I would think. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, they were lucky to have the people they did that were willing to work for that amount. And uh, yes. in the little bit of time that Jeff was there, he did get a lot accomplished. So um, we wish him the best. He's going to go back into the construction business like he was before. Um, I feel like having that construction background could certainly be very um, yeah. instrumental in, in city planning and all of that. So um it looks like our, our newest candidate has the same uh, experience. So that's yeah. good. And he's from Wellston, so that's always that's always good. Someone yeah. who knows the city. You've got it. And uh, pretty cool stuff. All right. Well, very good. So you heard it here first. Yeah. Woo literally. That, that email came in at 912, so we just <laughs> broke that 20 minutes ago. Hey, we are on top of things this morning. So... All right, so Phil is here. Uh, what would you like to talk about today, Phil? Whatever you want to talk about. Well, I have some good news for all of you. Okay. James is going to like this, too. You guys, I can see that you participating in this. So fill in the blank. Everything is better with... Chocolate. Okay. Booze. Uh, Jeez. Yeah, booze. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I can't argue that. <laughs> A nap afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Money. Oh, I like all of those. I mean, you know. Well, have you ever heard the term everything's better with bacon? Yeah, I have. Right? So Oscar Meyer is aiming to please. So Oscar Meyer has come out and announced that they have created you all need you you all want this <laughs> bacon scented shoelaces oh what what is that so you can get attacked by dogs all day long i don't know <laughs> i was wondering the same thing and they are giving them away to fans for a new sweepstakes <clears throat> interesting yep the brand famous for their wiener mobile launched a giveaway on social media last friday to celebrate nike's air max day when the shoe company re we released its Air Max Bacons. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So they're dropping bacon scented uh, laces that'll make your kicks sizzle. Ooh. <laughs> Pun intended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder how long they smell like bacon, though. I was wondering the same thing. Just end up just smelling like feet pretty fast. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah like. I don't know what's just overpowering, the bacon or the smelly feet, you know, the stinky feet smell. Have you, either of you guys ever seen the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile before? No. Just 
pictures of it. I've never seen it in real life. I saw two of them together driving down the highway. Early. No way. <laughs> Later, like not a couple months ago. There must That's... have been a hot dog emergency. Right. Oh my god. And I'm going one way on the highway and I see the side of the corner of my eye and I'm just like two Oscar <laughs> There's two Wiener mobiles. Not just one, but not two. Not one, two of them. So it must have been an intern thing. So the funny thing about these Wiener mobiles that people don't know is they literally hire interns to drive these things. So they're all the time wrecking them, right? Oh, man, yeah. So, I mean, you see more wrecked Wiener mobiles than you do, you know, <laughs> uh, good, good Wiener mobiles driving down the road. But, uh, all right, so you have to be 18 or older. You have to tweet hashtag Oscar cook my kicks you got all that and that really rolls off the tongue yeah. oscar <laughs> cook my kicks yeah that's tough to say and hashtag sweepstakes before april 1st to enter winners will be randomly selected on april 2nd um they say there are a few things better than the delicious smell of freshly cooked oscar meyer bacon but you shouldn't have to turn on the stove to fill your nostrils with the heavenly scent. Michael Scott knows what to do without having to <laughs> turn on the oven to get his fresh bacon. Who? Kick on that Foreman Michael grill. Michael from the office. <laughs> oh! He's got, a, he's got a timer on his George Foreman grill, so it just comes on every morning. So it can, makes him bacon? So you can wake up to the smell of bacon. Yep. <laughs> yep. But he keeps it on the floor next to his bed. He stepped on it and sizzled on his it foot. And cooks his foot. <laughs> Wraps it in bubble wrap. <laughs> That's fantastic. Oh, man. I've seen that show way too many times. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I never got into The Office. I, I wish love I it. Had. I've seen it like three or four times like through. Had the bacon shoelaces. Yeah. <laughs> I bet he would. He's already fried his foot. <laughs> Makes sense. Well, I wonder if you fry the bottom of your foot, then it probably wouldn't smell like dirty feet. It would just smell like, you know, burnt skin. Yeah. That'll be their next shoelace smell. Ew. Sizzling skin. I don't know. So, do you want to walk around with like bacon smelling shoes? Like, I would be, I would be afraid of it. The animal thing, like I said, some yeah. stray dog would think you were a big pile of bacon. It would be so interesting to see if like animals really would be like, because like I come home from the restaurant, my dog's like, yes. <laughs> like I, I can't even imagine like having bacon smelling shoes. I, I really want to know how long that lasts too, because I, I bet know. you it's like a day. As long they as don't. a car air freshener. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. They go in, well, they probably don't even know. I've seen bacon scented. I've seen a lot of bacon scented things. Mm -hmm. Some some okay, some not Some so make okay. no sense at all, but that's one of them. The shoelaces make no sense at all to me, but hey. I mean, hey, whatever tickles your peach, man. I guess. Um, and in our... Um, Daily, I feel like, report of peeps. I have a new peeps story for you. I don't know. Peep, peeps has been brilliant this year. It's like they've taken a food that nobody likes in any way, shape, or form and have really made themselves relevant this year. James just made some yeah. uh, Rice Krispie treats with some peeps. How did your Rice Krispie treats turn out, by the way? I didn't see a picture. Um... So there's the picture. Oh, they're so pretty. They turned out pretty well. They uh, they're a little bit sweeter than regular Rice Krispie treats. Oh yeah. And the recipe we use said to use like uh, this like fancy salted butter. So we used that, and that made it kind of creamier, I think, than right normal butter would have made it. Okay. So they're pretty good. Huh. So, how do you melt? down the how did you get the colors like to not so we, mix together so we just divided them by the three collars melted them in the microwave we you had to add a little bit of food coloring because the collar gets like the actual collar from the peeps isn't quite enough to get them that uh -huh. right i wonder so you gotta add that. a little bit of food coloring well you, you just kind of keep them separate and it looked it, honestly this looked prettier if you flipped it upside down because <laughs> it was a little bit more evenly oh yeah matt it looked prettier when you cut them up too the yellow kind of all went on the top but yeah I mean, they were really pretty it was it was fun okay <laughs> my next question is where are they and why are they not here there's not very many left <laughs> <laughs> evidently we don't rate i guess not i mean i would have been very happy to sample the peeps rice crispy treats Parker made me buy him some fancy peeps. That I think he wanted birthday cake flavored. 
They they're, have birthday cake flavored peeps. Yep. Oh. They're okay, but. I mean, yeah. Yeah. But no, credit man, they're they continue to make themselves relevant. Yeah, they're all over it. Well, we announced they had partnered with Pepsi and made. Peeps Pepsi, but they were just giving it away. Like you had to enter for a contest, but they were doing like a three pack, one, one can of, of each color of the peeps. Right. So on Friday, Seven Eleven has partnered with, they are selling peeps. Hmm. I need to call up Jenny at the spot and <laughs> Slacking. Yeah. It's a marshmallow flavored drink. Will only be. Eleven peeps. And you can get it. And you can get it. Hot, cold, and frozen. I don't know. Frozen. So several other. I mean, while we're talking about Seven Eleven, giving them a free plug. Um, in limited editions, um, they will also have other seasonal treats: a giant frosted shortbread cookie, butter flour. Wait. Butterfly and flower shaped mini gum gummy candies. I say that five times fast. <laughs> uh, pretzels covered in strawberry flavored coating and sandwich cream cookies with spring flavors, including carrot cake, pineapple upside down cake, and banana cream pie. Good lord, it's like diabetes in a store, man. <laughs> didn't didn't Seven Eleven buy up all the Speedways? I don't know. Did they? I thought they did. That's yeah. What... I, I, yeah. I, I think you're right. I don't think they plan to rebrand them, but I do think okay. the company that owns that's what I was wondering about Speedway. Well, I wonder if Speedway is going to have this then. I don't know. So I didn't know they were. I didn't know they weren't going to rename them. I didn't. I, was, I mean, I could be wrong, but that was the way I understood it. I mean, it was a couple of years ago, I think, when that happened. Okay. I want a Peeps latte. Where's the closest Seven Eleven, James? How do we find that? Probably Columbus. Yeah, probably. Is there one in Chill Coffee? No. Know, let's find out. I'll bet there's a 7-Eleven store finder online. As much money as they just spent to buy Speedway. I'd say we'll see more and more of them. Yeah. And I wonder if they own Speedway, do they get the peep stuff too? Or the other fun stuff? I kept waiting to see if the one in Jackson was going to change, but it makes more sense that they would just buy just the company and keep, keep it the it way the it Keep it the way that it is, yeah. Isn't the 7-Eleven the one that has the Slurpees or the Big Gulps or whatever? Yeah. Big Gulps. Yeah. I have to sneeze. Prove it. The nearest 7-Eleven is in Huntington. 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 Wow. 7-Eleven must own Sunco also. Okay. Well, I want a Peeps latte. I would try that. I would definitely try that. I mean, there's some of this stuff that's like, like honestly, Peeps Pepsi. Like, yeah, how that's... do you get that any, like, Pepsi any sweeter? Like Exactly, yeah. That makes me sick. I don't. <laughs> Again, it's like diabetes in a store. So, I don't know. I have some good news to share oh, on you behalf do? of one of our coworkers, Yay. Joel Walton, who is one of our media executives, <gasps> welcomed him and his wife, welcomed their first Yay. born son Friday night. They named him Julian. This is Julian Kenneth Walton. Nice. He was six pounds, seven ounces, and 19 inches long. All right. Oh, Julian, you are just a precious little nugget. <laughs> oh, Congratulations, Welcome. Joel. You're going to be real sleepy, Joel. Yeah. Forever. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed sleep the rest of your previous life. Yeah, I've been waiting on this day for you, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> I got all kinds of goodies I can share with you. All the joy. 
Well, he's an awful cute little nugget he right is. now. He is. I was talking to uh, one of my friends was in the restaurant the other day, and she said, "I only, I know, I only pick post pictures of my new baby sleeping, but it's so much easier." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I said, "Well, I figure he wakes up eventually, like you know." She's like, "It's so much easier to get pictures while they're sleeping." <laughs> Wait till they start moving around and talking. <laughs> I'm like, no, I. I Totally did not. I'm not judging <laughs> at all. <laughs> totally makes sense to me. So what do you think should happen to this little guy? Well, actually, big guy. Um, there's in, in Rhode Island, there is a cow that escaped from the, the loading dock of a Rhode Island slaughterhouse. And he was on the lamb, <sighs> pun intended, um, for two months. Two months. He escaped. He was on the run, this cow, for two months after he fleed the facility. He's a 1,500-pound steer. He's been roaming the area after he made a break from the slaughterhouse. Um, In the weeks, he has been roaming residential yards and even made a brief appearance 10 miles away in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, Police had warned locals to steer clear. Steer steer clear. Uh, fearing that he may cause a potential traffic accident, <laughs> residents were advised uh, to contact, you know, somebody if they saw him and not try to, you know, round him up. <laughs> um, finally, on Friday morning, they confirmed he had been recaptured by his owner, though they were unaware, unaware of his fate. The cow has been returned right now to the owner's Connecticut farm. So a lot of folks are, they've started a a change.org petition (laughs) to urge the owner to donate the the cow to a sanctuary, ensuring he'll never be brought to a slaughterhouse again. Um, Someone wrote in, in the petition, it says anyone who tries as hard as he did to deserve to enjoy the good life at a sanctuary. Um, he has over 12,000 signatures <laughs> and it says, let's make sure we secure his future so he can rest easy. Oh I don't know. I'm just going to say if you're a cow and you're smart enough to get away from humans and, and, and be on the run for two months and survive and do all the, the, things that are required to to live and whatever i think that you should probably deserve to uh live in a sanctuary yeah give him a pardon i think so so i'm like oh so they took him back to the cow's owner so is he just gonna take him back to the slaughterhouse please I'd... don't do that that's not okay <laughs> yeah that's probably what's gonna happen he's probably just gonna yeah they're just going to load him up with the next round and take him in. Well, like, maybe now that he's got some attention, it won't happen. But I hope not. I mean, I don't know. I understand that it needs to happen and that that's money for the farmer and that's how farmers make money, and I get all that. But you can make money off that cow some other not, yeah, way. Now you can. Like, I mean, he could just round the, the, the TV morning TV circuit or something. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Teach him how to walk on a leash and, and <laughs> take him to the studio or something. I think the other cows are going to be pretty upset, though. I know. They'll probably be yeah, envious. Yeah. <laughs> two months. How did they not find a cow for two months, though? I agree. In a place like Rhode Island, especially. Is that- <laughs> did he Rhode walk Island back and forth across Rhode Island three big. times? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's a 1,500-pound cow. Like, it's not <laughs> like it's a it's a cat. <laughs> He was just hiding behind a tree somewhere. And <laughs> I mean, that's funny. There's like pictures of him, like in someone's <laughs> front yard, and I mean that would be awesome just to have. Uh... So my father-in-law had bought some calves uh, several months ago, and one of them escaped, and he never has found it. This he cows drove are all a lot over sneakier. the place looking for him, and he never has found him. A lot sneakier than I thought. Yeah, so we're like, we don't know. And, you know, called the sheriff's office thinking that somebody would report, like, I have this extra cow in my field or, you know, there's a cow in my front yard or whatever. And no one's heard anything. So I don't know if he just joined a herd somewhere. And and 
I don't know. It's like, <laughs> where did he go? He started hanging out with the wrong crowd. I know. He's on the wrong he's side a, of the tracks now. He's out, yeah, smoking pot in the bleachers <laughs> with the wrong, <laughs> with the wrong herd. I remember going out and like walking through the woods <clears throat> with, uh, out like John Zimmery Road outside of Oak Hill. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of farms and stuff. And uh, this just like cow skeletons and stuff all over the woods oh. out there because oh they gosh. get lost in the wood. They get loose and they get lost in the woods and nobody uh. ever finds them out there. Oh, thanks, James. <laughs> now I'm feeling really bad. <laughs> I was going to tell you, too, there used to be a place in Colton. I don't know exactly where it is. It was Colton Glenroy somewhere in that area. They called it Devil's Hole. And they said that I think it fell down into like an underground uh, waterway. Uh huh. But cows would fall in that all the time. And you guys are not helping my story any. <laughs> I think they at least have that like partitioned off now, to where <laughs> people can't just fall to their death. But yeah, that's so sad. It's a pretty big hole if a cow can fall in it. And they said they claim that you wouldn't ever really hear it hit anything; it would just fall, <laughs> and then never to be seen again. So who knows? Well, in the my sound, and now I'm just imagining the sound that a cow makes when it falls down. <laughs> You just hear a moo until it goes away. (laughs) At the bottom, like, I don't know. How big of a splash is it? I bet it would be pretty big. It's a cannonball. (laughs) Aw. Okay, well, in my mind and in my story, it ends that the cow is just living his best life out in in sunny pastures somewhere. That could be. I hope that's the case. Yeah. Or if anyone sees a red cow with a white face, just let me know (laughs) running around. Because he, I know where he goes. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So speaking of, did you hear about the lady that was found in the storm drain? Oh, no. no. This is a creepy, weird story. So this lady, so this happened down in Florida, um, in Delray Beach. So. These people are like walking down the street and they hear this like lady yelling for help and they look down in the storm drain and there's a lady down in there. And she's and so they call 911. So everybody shows up and they find this lady and she's completely naked and so they you know get her they have to go down and like strap her in and like get her out of the storm drain. So, okay, so can you even imagine what's in a storm drain? So so they're trying to figure out how she got down in there. So she says she's been, is that her? Yep. Okay. She'd been missing since March 3rd. Jeez. And they're not sure how long she'd been in that that particular pit, but her boyfriend had, had reported her missing that same day. And like her person stuff was at the house and uh, her, his, her phone and everything. She says she went out swimming in a canal and found a tunnel and went down in the tunnel to explore and then got lost. Um, so she has had been down there, whatever. So the authorities were saying they can't believe that anyone had been down there that long. Um, right. It's dirty, dangerous. There's snakes, rats, garbage, dirt, leaves. Anything that's on the street washes into the sewer, as you can imagine. But anyway, um, so yeah, I can't even think of how horrible that would have been for her. They say she has a history of mental illness, but I don't know if one has anything to do with the other. But she said she just was swimming in a canal and got lost, and I just don't. I have an idea. Don't go into a tunnel. Yeah. I you mean, don't. are you Mario? Like, I know. It's probably not going to end well. Like, it's I not, don't... like there's no reset button <laughs> on, on that. Like, you. I want to know how long she had to swim through this tunnel, too. Like, midway through, you'd think, I should probably turn around. I should probably turn around. <laughs> and, and or I should probably not go down another tunnel where I might not know how to get back out. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's unfortunately where the mental illness comes in. I'm not Possibly. sure, but uh, that's a long time frame there too. That is a yeah. And luckily, someone. I mean, she was able to get to somewhere where someone was able to hear her, and they got her out. But can you imagine like the authorities getting that call? Like, 
I swear I'm not crazy. There is a woman down there. They're probably <laughs> just, sure. They're probably excited. It's something different to do. Yeah, right. I would assume they don't get that call too often. That's. Yeah, I would hope not. And she wasn't like high or anything then, so that was probably right. a refreshing thing for them. Well, and that's the thing too. You'd have to assume that someone, would, yeah, anyone that would be down there would be like, you know, cracked out of their mind. Yeah, or especially something. when they're naked and they've been down there for the better part of a month. One hundred percent. And um, also, there is a couple in the Ukraine who have pledged to strengthen their relationship. They break up about every other day. <laughs> so they decided on Valentine's Day that to strengthen their relationship, because they literally break up every other day, that they were going to handcuff themselves to each other. Solid thinking. For three months. <laughs> I'm just saying. They should have tried just living together in a storm drain for a month. Right? <laughs> Apparently, it's not that hard. What the heck? Um. Yeah, they said they used to break up once or twice a week. Jeez, once or twice a week. Yeah, that's what maybe, I'm saying. They break up like every other guys. Yeah, probably I know. Is. <laughs> so when during another fight, one of them said we had to break up. And, and the girl said, then I will attach you to myself. Um, that wasn't a red flag for the guy at all. Right. No, wait a minute. I'm, I'm backwards. It was the guy that said that. Oh, okay. Either way, it's insane. I, I would never really think a woman would want to be handcuffed to a man because eventually he's going to have to go to the bathroom. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, it would be good to handcuff yourself for you. Yep. Um. The real question is, what did they do with the key? Uh, Fair. If they don't break up after this, I'll be very surprised. And I wonder how long they make it into this. Yeah, experiment. I don't I don't know. Um, so the girlfriend was initially miffed and hung up the phone, but then she later warmed up to the idea and agreed to give it uh, a whirl. Uh, now they do everything together, from getting ready each morning in their apartment to eating breakfast side by side. When they shop the grocery store, they even hold the same basket. How do you get dressed? You'd have to take it off Fair. to put a shirt on. You'd have to. Yeah, how do you get dressed? They'd have to take it off for that, I would think. I mean, unless they destroyed just all their wearing clothes. wearing the same shirt for three months. <laughs> just get a really big shirt. Just, just oh, take Oh, they're the... wearing one of those get-along shirts where it's like real big <laughs> yeah. and most people can fit in it. She said, I love him, so I came to a decision to do it. Um, they say the tension is still rising, but they found productive new ways to work through their spats. Fights between us did not disappear. We still fight. I bet. But when, <laughs> I mean, you could be the world's best couple and be handcuffed to someone and just, yeah, oh, this would end badly. Too much. Uh, when we approach a dead end, there's no understanding between us. We simply stop talking instead of packing up our things and walking away. Like a normal person would, you know, just be quiet for a while. and <laughs> I'm leaving. They say, <laughs> this is because, I mean, the obvious question is the bathroom, right? Yeah. Like, like they yeah. can have one of those toilets on Saturday Night Live, but back to back. <laughs> <laughs> They say they take turns using the toilet. One waits outside the bathroom with their hands stretched inside. Oh, whatever. Um, she, she works as a beautician, and he is an online car salesman. So I'm not exactly... So he just sits at the boutique all day on his laptop. On his laptop, like with his hand up here like this. I like, don't want anyone cutting my hair with one hand. <laughs> right. Well, and that's what I'm I'm like, okay, so does his hand have to go with her hand? And like, like none of this is making any sense. No. Well, it's probably convenient when you've got like an extra thing you need to hold and you don't have an yeah. extra hand. You just feel like, here, man. <laughs> yeah. Hold this, hold this for bottle. me. <laughs> yeah, maybe he works on one side of the head and she yeah. works on the well, other side yeah. of the head. I don't know. You could hold the mirror. Haircut. That would work. <laughs> I could just think of a lot of ways that just goes really bad and wrong. I can't wait to see how this uh, experiment ends. Yeah, we need to follow up in like another month and find out what the heck is going on with these Probably people. Double homicide. So, yeah, right. Murder suicide. <laughs> but they're hooked together, so they don't know which one went first. Yeah, yeah. Right? There'd be no way of knowing. Oh my gosh. So crazy. 
All right, so our brackets are all busted, but I do have you, who Michigan you, winning. You have Michigan. Okay, your winner is still alive. You got so my winner is still alive. And uh, did you fill out a bracket? No. <laughs> I'm not good at this stuff. <laughs> well, neither am I. I don't know I what I'm been doing. I would have lost it right away because I would have picked Ohio State. <laughs> they would have been over with. Well, I certainly, well, everyone would have picked Ohio State over Earl Roberts. And she, yeah, I mean, then they, they turned around and beat Florida, too. They literally just barely lost um, Saturday night. So, I, I have to say, I was really rooting for them. We watched uh, the end of that game, and I was hoping I, that they would. I watched so many basketball games this weekend that they all bled together. <laughs> but the Oral Roberts, they were up by 12, right? And ended up losing by two. They That's blew crazy. it, yeah. Who'd they lose to? I have um, to look it up. I don't, can't remember. Like I said, I, there's all those games just bleed together. Yeah, bad. I can't even remember because I wa- we watched that one and then we watched the. Um, it would have been. Uh, they they lost to Arkansas, Arkansas. seventy seventy two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I know when they Arkansas when they, gets to play Baylor now. Today. When they beat Florida, that was what the second time that that's ever happened that a fifteen seed beat a number one or two seed like that i don't know i mean there's still two double digit seats alive in the elite eight wow that's wild i mean it's just a mess two number ones and two double digits but you know that makes it fun too like you kind of have to root for like the little guy i take that back there's still three of the four number ones are still in it are they yeah it's just nice to see different people in there this time around i mean it's always kentucky and duke you you know different people like ucla yeah. Right, <laughs> and exactly. Gonzaga. I've got Gonzaga and Michigan playing. I think this is probably Gonzaga's year. They've made the tournament like twenty years in a row now. Oh, yeah. and never won it. I this is probably their year. Hey, Shh. I mean, I I don't mean to be hating on you cheering for Michigan. <laughs> hey, I the facts are the facts, man. I I'm not cheering for Michigan. I'm just saying. Well, no, I saw I'm you predicting. wearing your maize and blue the other day. Yeah, not gonna happen. <laughs> not a chance. Do you know that I bought collapsible bowls for Marley, and they come in basically that. whatever color. So like when we travel with her, they collapse flat. And they come in whatever color they send you, and they send a two-pack. And so I have a yellow, an orange, a blue, and a green. And <laughs> I had to literally go back inside one day because the two I grabbed were yellow and blue. And I was like, uh-uh, not, not happening. Not using that combination. Yeah, not going to happen. My dog is not drinking out of yellow and blue bowls. It but is see, not I- I, I grew up in Wellston, so I had to like those colors. <laughs> That's and true. Everybody <laughs> thinks that you're rooting for Michigan when you sport those. But <laughs> well, that's it. fair. If you grew up in, in Wellston, that's but, okay. See, in Wellston's case, it was always blue and gold. And when I played, they actually had gold. Like, it was a real gold. Like a gold gold, yeah. not yellow. And now it's back to yellow again, yeah. which doesn't make sense, but whatever. Well, gold's more expensive than yellow. Yeah. We yeah. even had the fancy Toledo rocket on our helmet when we played, too. Ooh. We got real fancy. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, got to get out of here for the day. Before we do that, did want to thank our friends at Callahan Hardware. I think our friend Jeff will be in next week to talk about some of the great things they have going on there. So we look forward to that. Also, Chip and Kathy at the shop. If you have any fairs, festivals, or, or events, you know, they're starting to open back up. If you need trophies or plaques or anything like that made, please contact Chip and Kathy at the shop. Uh, 988-2841 and they will help you out with that also wanted to thank our friends at the billing station the store broadway and pen and wellston speaking of wellston and if you haven't been to the store recently check out um the great food that they have items the hosers pizza the cauliflower crust pizza um they have all kind of breadsticks and sandwiches and salads and all kind of fun stuff there And also, of course, our good friend Carman the Carman, where the deals are great. Don't forget their service department. Anything from an oil change on up to transmission work. Uh, If you have a light that's beeping at you and you have no idea where to turn, uh, they have all the computers and diagnostic testing right there. They can plug your car in and let you know exactly what's going on with it. So, all righty. Have a great day. Thank you, Phil. Thank Thank you. Thank you, James. And we will be back here tomorrow on Tuesday. And 
Uh, we'll see you then. Have a great day. Enjoy some sunshine. Bye-bye, everyone.